All right. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Uh, this is Tanner Steed. Welcome back. Um, we're going to be working today on uh, a rose that I've actually set up right next to um, my easel. Um, it is not a real rose, but um, the process in which I'll be kind of showing you guys is identical whether or not it's real or if it's fake. And really, it's going to be the exact same process that I would use when uh, painting any subject matter. Right, so I'm squirting out some paint today. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have a very, very limited palette. I've got titanium white. I've got some raw umber. Uh, raw umber is Old Holland. Um, and then my titanium white is Williamsburg. Um, let's see. And yesterday, I came across, uh, I was hanging out with Daniel Sprick, and he gave me some old paint. So I'm going to be trying out this ancient gambling paint, um, cadmium chartreuse. Super, super intense, almost green. Um, and I'm just going to use a tiny, tiny bit of that in my lights. So today I have warm light and cool shadows, and you guys can see in the reference photo. Um, now, if you guys could, it'd be really helpful if you could tell me now, at least, if, uh, if you see that, or if the audio is good. So if, if you could leave a comment and let me know that the audio is good, uh, and then I don't need to do any corrections, that would be very, very helpful. Um, and also, why don't you let me know where you're watching from? I always think it's super cool. Um, get people all over the place, all over the world watching. All right, I'm also opening up this tube of paint. Um, yellow ochre light. Um, might use just a little bit of that. Putting that off to the side. Okay, and let's see. Raw umber, some of that, and let me grab, just off camera, I've got some Indian yellow. So I'll be placing that in. I'll just put it right there. You guys can see it. So titanium white, cadmium chartreuse, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, and raw umber. Um, all sounds good. Excellent. Thanks, you. Thanks guys. Grab my paper towel. All right. So we're going to start today. I'm working on a six by eight panel. This is oil prime linen, uh, Centurion Deluxe oil prime linen that I get on Jerry's Artorama. It's what I've been using in all of my all of my streams. Uh, I'm going to start out with a a little charcoal sketch uh, and really just going to start out by creating an envelope. So an envelope is essentially a two-dimensional shape that is the most simple depiction of whatever we are, are drawing. This is kind of interesting. Um, the rose is off to my right hand side if I were to recommend to you, if you were setting up a still life um, and painting from life, I would recommend putting it on the opposite side. So I'm right-handed, so typically I have my reference on the left-hand side. But for this stream, I'm looking over my right. Um, not ideal, but doesn't mean you can't do it. So very, very simple drawing, nothing too, too crazy. Starting with charcoal, so if I don't like my sketch, I can just easily wipe it away. Um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. And then I think, let's see. Go like this, go like that. And I'll be drawing as I go. I don't have 
just a drawing phase, do a full underdrawing and then move on from there, especially doing an alla prima painting. Kind of need to move a bit faster than that. So. All right, I'm liking that. I like this diagonal. This diagonal is pretty nice. And this too, it's repeated here and here. So maybe we'll have a background that kind of goes up and to the right. Um, in the reference, the background uh, in the photo is just the wall behind it. I'm probably going to make something up. <clears throat> All right, yeah, let me know where you guys are all from. So Andrew's from Houston, Texas. Uh, glad you're back, Andrew. Rob, uh, CP Woodturner, Newcastle. Newcastle upon, T I, I have no idea how to say that. Why is it so difficult? Newcastle upon Tyne, England. I am so sorry. <laughs> glad you're back. And, you know, as I go along, Please feel free to ask me as any questions. Um, I know last time we had a great discussion, so if you have any questions, if you want tips on anything. And yeah, I want you to get the most out of these streams. Because again, I am constantly painting, constantly in the studio. So I thought, why not just film myself doing what I'm doing? So this is actually going to be a gift for someone. OK, so now I'm going over with just a regular number two pencil. And uh, I've decided that this drawing is strong enough, proportions are accurate enough. So I'm just reinforcing them with something that won't come off. Whereas the charcoal would dust off and even mix into my paint. So notice how I'm not worried about the stem. I'm not worried about the leaves. Just got a very, very simple outline. Now I'm wiping away the charcoal with my paper towel. And I'm going to be using this rose as inspiration for the painting. I don't plan on copying it exactly. I think I'm going to create a painting inspired by it rather than just doing exactly what's, what's going on. So I have some bit of the sniffles. <laughs> All right, so laying out some uh, liquid. Okay, I'm going to be mixing that into all of my mixtures. Um, I'm going to create a very, very simple um, light and dark pattern. And I'm going to start by grabbing my titanium white and mixing just a tiny touch of this cadmium chartreuse. So we decide you know, whether we have warm or whether we have cool light. In this case, I'm saying that the light is not just warm, it's cadmium chartreuse warm, which is like a green yellow. Wow, this is so cool. This is a beautiful, beautiful color. I've never used this before. Again, Dan gave me this yesterday. And if you follow me on Instagram, you can see the rose that I painted with him. So this is kind of like um, a follow-up. Um, he was, he gave me a demo, me and my buddies a demo on how he goes about roses. And this is me practicing that process. Are you using vine or compressed charcoal, please? Um, I was using vine charcoal. Compressed charcoal sticks to the canvas a little bit too much. I want to be able to wipe it away and erase it, so I use vine charcoal in that earliest stage. And then that was just a regular number two pencil. All right, I want to make sure that this is a consistent mixture. I don't want any white spots. I want it to be all, oh yeah, that's good. Okay, let's get all that off. Take my paper towel, wipe it away. I'm gonna grab a little bit more liquid. Put 
that down here. Now I'm going to make the cool side. So I'm grabbing some raw umber. And you know, I, I've actually laid out quite a large palette. So I'm actually going to grab some turquoise blue. I'll make that more obvious. Move it over here. So this is turquoise blue by Rembrandt. I'm going to take some of that. I'm going to mix it into my raw umber. So I have warm light, cool shadows. It's kind of creating a nice green. Raw umber is a neutral yellow. So yellow and blue makes green. Okay, and now I'm going to create a value uh, scale going from light to dark. Make maybe five steps. So I'll take a portion of this pile, put it here. Take a portion of this pile, a little bit more, put it here. Mix those up. Ooh, that is green. It's going to be an interesting rose. <laughs> so really, the colors don't matter, OK? Color gets the credit, value does the work. Um, I could choose any number of colors from light to dark, and it will create a different effect. So color does matter in the, in the end, but it's not something that I'm freaking out about. I'm more concerned with warm versus cool mixtures. OK, and I actually might, this is very, very green. I would rather it go a little bit blue rather than green. So I'm actually going to go into this mixture, cool it off a little bit more. OK, and now I'm going to take that, and I'm going to mix it into this middle pile. On my screen, I'm seeing reflected blue on the left-hand side of the rose. That's exactly right. So what I've done is I've positioned a blue mirror right next to that rose. Um, and it's creating that blue reflected light. So I just wanted to overemphasize the warm versus cool dynamic. Um, and that's why I've got blue in this mixture. OK, now I'm going to. Take this a step down, grab some of this, mix that there. So my painting is going to be inspired by that reference photo. It is not going to look identical. I'm not going for color accuracy. I'm going for a harmony in the painting inspired by that lighting dynamic. So I'll be using it for the drawing and positioning of the petals. And I think we're going to create something that's pretty darn interesting. Good feeling about this one. OK, so this is my value scale going from light, medium, to dark in my shadow value. Um, and my darkest note is going to be raw umber. OK, raw umber is very, very warm. OK, so wherever I have my warmest notes, here, I'll put this up here so you guys can see. My warmest, my darkest notes are going to be very warm. Okay, I've got that, and I will change these colors as necessary. These are just like the most basic value structure. I'll slide all these up. I'm saying we're kind of going off camera a bit. So that's my string of color. Okay, I'm going to wipe that off, grab a new paper towel. I've been reusing these, so I've got a big box full of <laughs> paper, or paint colored, paint covered paper towels. And I let them dry, and then I continue using them. Because really, they're never soaked in like Gamsol or anything like that. It's just little bits of paint. And so I feel bad throwing something away like, you know, like this. Like that, that's not enough paint. But when it's wet, 
kind of gets crazy, so I just crumple it up and I, yeah. Anyways, I reuse it. Okay, let me get my brush out. So we can use a number of different brushes, but generally this painting is very, very small, so I'm going to be picking out uh, a lot of really small brushes. And don't worry, I will let you know as I switch between them what brush I'm using. Just get a variety out. I'm going to start with this uh, really, really inexpensive brush. <laughs> I got it on Blick. It's a Royal Langnicker. Uh, please. Yeah, it, super, super inexpensive brush. Nothing fancy at all. Lang Nickel, I think. I don't know, the label rubbed off. Okay, so I'm going to draw my shadow shape uh, using one of these values. Now, I wouldn't want to grab my darkest dark at this stage. I'm just focusing on the left hand side where uh, my shadows are. Okay, so. I'm thinking I'm going to go with, with this guy, okay, this green. It's difficult to draw roses. Thank you. This will help me a lot. Awesome. Um, yeah, stoked you're, you're watching. Hope this will, will help you. Um, this is a simplified method. It, it works very, very, very well. So I've drawn my two-dimensional outline. The next step is to draw my shadow shape. And I'm going to be drawing that with paint. What style of brushwork? Quick, slow, slow, loose, tight, tanner style. Uh, Andrew, I have no idea. We're going to find out. <laughs> it's probably going to be on the looser end because I plan on doing this in a single session. Uh, but I'm not going to be like psh, laying down big brushwork. Um, that's just not my thing. Okay. I've got my mall stick handy. So I'll place that up here on the wall, steady my hand, and um, I'm pretty far back from the canvas, so I can view both the rows, the canvas, and my cameras. So I need the support of this mall stick. It's very, very helpful. So I'm squinting down, squint, 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 as hard as you can, and I'm just trying to find the shape of the shadow. Yeah, this green is going to be so interesting. I usually try to capture exactly what color that I'm seeing, or something close to it, right? Um, but, you know, after getting those paints from Dan yesterday, I was like, oh man, I really want to test them out. And really, a white rose can be so many different colors depending on the lighting, right? As long as it's a warm and cool mixture, this, this is an experiment on camera. We're going to We'll find out what, what happens. Um, I don't think it's going to be a complete and utter failure because I don't let that happen. <laughs> I keep working on it until it's up to my satisfaction. So the whole left-hand side of this is going to be covered in this dark value. I'm squinting down simplifying, combining shapes. I'm not concerned with individual petals. Squint, squint, squint. I can always lighten. I can always darken. Okay, I'm staying in the lines of my drawing. Okay, it gets a little bit lighter out here. Uh, and I am using liquid, so this should set up quick, quite quickly. Just going to scrub that in nice and thin. There's a light shape here. Squinting, squinting, squinting. Yep, that's in the light too. Sometimes reflected light can be perceived as a light shape, but really it's not. It's it's in the shadow, but it just happens to be receiving enough reflected light to trick you into, think, into you thinking that it's 
in the light shape. Okay. Just getting a lot of the coolness. Okay. And I'm getting a lot of glare, but the camera is positioned pretty good. It doesn't look like you guys are getting too much glare, so that's good. Have you ever used angle shader brushes before? I have not. I um, wonder what that's like. Um, is it a brand of brush or a shape? It sounds like a shape. Give me a, a follow-up. I'd love to hear Rob. I'm squinting. See the shadow shape right here, going here. All right. I'm going to clean this brush off, and I'm going to move into my light shape. Yes, yeah, it's going to be one green rose, guys. It's good. I have a little bit of terror. <laughs> I'm like, oh geez, this is on camera. Sorry. Okay. So now we're going to move into the light shape. I'm going to grab my lightest note here. And I thinned it out with Gamsol. So we're starting nice and thin. Okay. Um, and although I see a core shadow on this right hand side. I'm going to block in the entire thing consistently. There are tiny shadow shapes on the right hand side, but I'm not worried about those. We work general to specific. So I'm just going to block this in. Right up next to that edge using plenty of paint to cover, but it's still thin, okay? Um, I wouldn't say that I'm putting any impasto strokes on at this stage. That'll be at the very, very end when I decide where I want thick paint. I don't put thick paint everywhere. I think it's important to be very considerate of, of your impasto strokes. Right, like having crazy brushwork everywhere. Meh. Just not my thing. Okay, I have a light shape here, which could have been pushed into the shadow. That's okay. We'll see. And I believe I have a light shape here as well. So my first concern is value, OK? Color comes later. I'm either solving the drawing. I suppose drawing comes first. But after drawing and proportions, value comes next. Um, and I tried to get as close as I could my point of view in that reference photo, based on my current position, the rose has shif shifted slightly, uh, but it's very, very, very close. And with a rose, you get a lot of freedom in changing the direction of the petals, right? To design it, make it a more interesting shape. You don't have to make it exactly how it is. And I'll let you know if I'm going away from what I'm seeing. Okay. I'm just being very clean and organized, trying to create the perfect shadow shape based on how I am perceiving it. Uh, this guy is receiving a little bit of light here. OK. So we got light, we got shadow. 
Rob says, it's a shape like a dagger brush a little bit. OK, so I've used the um, dagger brushes before. I've used one at a slight angle. It's kind of like a, a flat, but at an angle. Maybe it's similar to that. I really like those uh, when they're soft. Um, they'd be great for painting roses. Because you need nice, crisp lines. All right, I'm liking that. It's the very brightest highlights that get the impasto. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right, so next up, I'm going to take my fan brush. Well, it doesn't have to be a fan brush, but a soft, soft brush. And I'm going to kind of smack this around a little bit, soften those edges. I like to soften as I go. This, that's a hard edge, soft edge. This. And because all of these are created with the exact same pigments, I'm not muddying the color, um, and I'm not concerned with that at all. So I'm creating the half tones by mixing these together. Just so I can start to feel the spherical nature of these petals. And this is helping me identify what is a sharp edge, what is a soft edge. Okay. Ta-da. <laughs> All right. Now I'm thinking we'll concern ourselves with the background later. I'm going to put that soft brush down. And I'm going to get a much smaller flat. This is a golden, let's see, what brush were you telling me to use? Angle shader brushes. Funny, this is a shader brush by Golden. Never actually looked at the label on this thing. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for us to put in our half tones. So I've got my lightest light, and then I've got this second value. I'm going to be loading up my brush, and I'm going to be putting in all of the uh, core shadows and uh, any half tone values on the right hand side of the rose, starting with this mixture. And I'm going to add a little bit of liquid and gamsol so this dries quickly and I'm just going to start up here so roses and sculptures and skin all have this really interesting quality to them in that they're semi-transparent and light can bounce through the surface so what this is called is subsurface scattering. And what happens is the light gets trapped inside of the, the petal or the flesh, and it kind of glows inside. And that's why the whole right-hand side of this rose is going to be very, very light. I can always get darker, and I can always get lighter. I don't believe in an overworked painting. 
And if a painting looks overworked, it's probably just not done, and you should keep working on it. Hot topic. Hot take, I mean. <laughs> Amazon has a set of 12 angle shader brushes of different sizes that are really cheap for Amazon UK, maybe available in the US too. Awesome. I will look those up. How'd you hear about those? Let's see, this pedal is going to be sticking out and going like this. I'm just crawling across the canvas. And I want you to notice that each time I can, wherever I can lose an edge, I'm losing it. So I'm combining this core shadow with this cast shadow, with this petal facing in. This petal is facing down. This one goes down here, and then there's the turning of the form going from light to shadow. So I'll place that in. I'm also seeing a little crease here and here. So I'm worried about value first, and then eventually I'll be concerning myself with subtle uh, temperature shifts. I'll use first. Okay, I like this, I like this. Soften these edges. Drag some of this light into the shadow. Okay, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. What are you thinking on the focal point? So, um, focal point is the rose in this case. Uh, I'll create kind of an abstraction in the background uh, that kind of mimics the, maybe the, this strong diagonal. Um, but this piece is gonna be very, very simple. Um, I wouldn't say there's maybe a single petal. I could get that specific. Um, I wanted. We'll, we'll find out. At this stage, I'm not too concerned with that. If I'm being honest. Lighten this. So because I painted thin, and because I have liquid in my paint, it's going to dry and kind of tack up more quickly. Um, and thanks to that, I can paint thick brush strokes on top. Um, I bought an oil painting course from Udeme, Udeme um, and the artist recommended angle shader brushes. But of course, all artists have different recommendations. Yeah, every artist has a slightly different favorite brush, favorite paint. You'll come to find out that it really doesn't matter. Pick something that you like, roll with it. As long as you have a quality support and artist grade paints, not student grade, it doesn't really matter what you're using to transport the paint to the canvas. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I am really liking this crazy color choice. Something. It's giving me the feels. Okay. So now I'm going to place in some of my dark accents. So. It is darkest in the creases of the form. So I'm just going to place in a dark note in here. So it's darker and warmer. So this is going to change our perception of that green, the temperature in our shadows. Okay, 
we'll place that in there. Um, let's see, between these two petals, there's a little dark note here. And I'll lay down a brush stroke, but then I'll continue to manipulate it. Um, even, I was just talking to some artists yesterday, and uh, we were talking about Richard Schmid. You know, his paintings are super loose. He's got wonderful brushwork. Even he said um, that he will lay down a brush stroke and then continue to manipulate it. It's not like he's laying it down and he's like, yep, that was perfect. No, typically he puts it down, he changes it, um, and gives the illusion of that effortless quality. Same as Sargent. Wipe the brush. Soft note. Soft. Soften that up here. And raw umber is a neutral yellow. Right? Said that before. So if I'm seeing any yellows in this. I can use my neutral yellow first. And then if I want to make it more saturated, I could introduce some of that Indian yellow. I'm seeing some red relative to the coolness up in this petal. So I want it to be the same value, but I want it to be a little bit warmer. I'm going to take a step back. Oh yeah, that is looking sweet. Mm. If I really wanted to experiment, I could put a dark background back here and make it really, really... What would make this green look blue? Mm. If I had something really green back here, I bet the rose would look more blue. We'll see. Actually, I'm going to try something. I want a dark background. I want it to be pretty neutral. So I'm grabbing, grabbing ivory black, some of my raw umber mixture. I'm going to start to put this back there, and this is going to influence our perception of how bright the uh, petals are. And I'm not concerned with the, the leaves or the stem at this point, not really. Maybe I'll include this one right here. I'm going to thin this out significantly. That way we can kind of um, feel this color out. See if we really like it. And if it's thin, we don't like it, we can change it. We started general, we're getting more specific. For the fun of it, maybe you could check a color wheel. Maybe you could check a color wheel for the background color. Um, well, if I want something to look more blue, could have a warm background, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So by putting in this brown, neutral brown using black and raw umber. <laughs> that green might start to lean blue. Uh, 
And look how vibrant that color is. Beautiful. I love white roses because it can still look like a white rose when you paint it in any color. You know? Because a white rose is so heavily influenced by the environmental light. By no means am I done with the detail of the rose. But I, I couldn't help myself. I love having the background color established, background value established. And really, it is kind of a good idea to build the whole picture up as a whole. Making subtle undulations in the petal. Yes, I could be using a bigger brush, but I'm not. <laughs> Much better control up against the edge of this, the contour. I think that's important. Um, and by thinning it out with Gamsol, it's making it much easier for me to make these nice crisp lines. Having more ivory black, more raw umber, more liquid. So I've been trying to get away from liquid lately to use some different mediums. But gosh, it's just the best, isn't it? I love this stuff. Oh yeah, it's looking pretty sweet. Pardon my naive enthusiasm. <laughs> Change the shape of this petal. A bit more like that. This is nice. I gotta set up a rose like this more often. It's right next to my easel. And let me let me know, guys. Uh, this is kind of an experimental setup. Do you like seeing the palette and the painting in the same, same area? I can't promise that I can do this every time, but I think I kind of like this. Makes it easier to film, and you get a higher quality picture of me. On this edge out. My grandfather's funny. If I don't um, put the paint all the way out to the edges of the canvas, this isn't for my grandpa, uh, but if I don't put the paint all the way to the edge of the canvas, he's like, why didn't you finish the painting? I'm like, what are you talking about? It's, it's done. That was on purpose. He's like, uh, no, I, th I think you need to fill in the white. That's how he gauges if a painting is done or not, if you can't see any white. <laughs> I think it's so funny. It's a great setup. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Sorry about that. My studio dog needs to head out. So 
I'm going to take a step back, look at this from afar. I'll have to block in that, that white area. Okay. All right, let's block in that greenery because it's a bit out of place. So this is truly green, right? The, the rose, we're trying to make it look more blue. So we need to make this significantly greener. So let's see what the most saturated green I can make is. This will be fun. So turquoise blue, this chartreuse is ridiculously powerful. It's probably too intense. Kind of makes me nauseous. So I'm going to neutralize it. And I'm asking myself, is it in the shadow or is it in the light? Well, I'd say most of it is in cast shadow. So it's got to be cool. Might neutralize it with some black. I just said I'm trying to make it an intense mixture. But I also don't want it to feel garish. I want it to feel harmonious. So we're going to try this. Let's see. I was worried about that white, but the background took care of it. Oh, yeah. Makes it much easier for you guys to see, I'm sure. Okay. Lay this in. It goes down like this, and then it transitions to a different local color, more red. So I'm going to grab raw umber. I'm going to have to pull from the rest of my palette. I just grabbed a little bit of permanent rose. Put that in, and then it, it warms up, and it gets lighter, So, because it's in the light. So I'm grabbing some of my white, some of my brown, more permanent rose off screen. And it doesn't seem too light yet, so I'm going to grab more of this. Permanent rose. Okay, we'll try that. It's not quite red enough, so I'll change that in a second. Sorry, Studio Dog won't make up her mind. Studio Dog's name is Remy. <laughs> That's a reference to Ratatouille and Rembrandt. <laughs> this is to this. This is to this. All right, and I'm looking at the camera and noticing that the lights are pretty blown out, so I'm going to try to help you guys and darken this a little bit. Let's see, I've zoomed in. Oh. Sorry about that. Let's see. Not able to change the exposure, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken some of those subtleties. Let's see, this could be a nightmare. I'm going to change it anyways and see what happens. Let me know in the comments if you can see some of the shadows a little bit better. The background has made it pop now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to darken some of those in the background. Um, we're getting some cool light influencing this core shadow. So I'm going to very carefully put in this core shadow with my darker mixture.
Don't want it to be too dark. So I'm mixing it into the paint that's on the canvas. Retaining its shape. It's looking great to me. Awesome. Okay. Now I'm going to kind of switch gears and start focusing more on am I perceiving warmth or is it getting cooler, darker, yada yada. Okay. So it's getting quite warm down in this crevice here. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit of Indian yellow. And if I put straight Indian yellow, it could be way too intense. So I'm going to grab some neutralizing yellow, raw umber. And I'm going to harmonize it using this mixture. We're going to place that in right here. And I'm going to mix it into the paint. It's already very potent. So if this is too intense, that's okay. We can still neutralize it. It's just test and retest. Everything is very controlled and I'm making decisions based on logic and not just chance. losing edges wherever I can lose my edges. Okay, I'm going to take a step back to read. Um, yeah, I think it's working. Cool. It's warming up there. Um, I'm also noticing some warmth in this petal. Um, but not quite that warm. I'll keep it pretty light. I'm just going to mix that in with my raw umber Indian yellow mixture. Like so. I'm also noticing it back here. Seeing a hard edge. Everything is just a series of gradation. Let's go here. I'm in the danger zone. I'm currently balancing on one foot. Not to brag. I'm a professional here. I'm going to start to warm up the half tone a little bit. So you can see it's kind of similar to drawing, right? Drawing is painting, establishing that gradation. Drawing is a part of painting. Let me rephrase that. So uh, Ron Hicks doesn't come over and hit me. So as I go, I'm getting just a little bit thicker with each brush stroke, okay? Especially in the lights. My shadows are gonna remain pretty darn thin. Lights are gonna get thick. Okay, taking a step back. It is emerging. It's exciting. Okay, I'm seeing some warmth 
in this shadow here due to subsurface scattering. Light is bouncing inside of this petal, even though this is a fake rose. This rose is uh, just from Hobby Lobby. You know, if you guys, you, very likely you have that outside of the United States. And I never shop there. But when you got good deals on roses that look pretty real, got to go for it. Okay, so this, the bottom here, is a nice soft edge. I'm going to switch brushes to something that just tickles the paint. Uh, this is a Rosemary & Co. Eclipse Long Comber, one of my favorites. I wish I was just a little taller. As you guys know, I'm 6'9", but I wish I could be just a few inches taller. Discount code in the comments. I will provide a discount code if anyone guesses exactly how tall I am. Discount code for what? For um, paintings on my website. Apart from today, where are you using your new yellow? Do you usually have the same colors on your palette each time, or does it depend on the subject you are working on? I would say 90% of the time I use I, the exact same colors. Um, today is just unique because I was gifted a ton of new paint, colors that I would have never thought to buy, um, d like dozens of new colors. I'm really excited about testing them out. Um, so my normal palette, uh, if you wanted to write it down, I can just list out the ones up here. Let's see. Um, I've got Pale Rose Blush, King's Blue, Titanium White, Naples Yellow, Cad Lemon, Cad Yellow Deep, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, Cadmium Orange, Cad Red, Alizarin Crimson, Permanent Rose, Dioxazine Violet, uh, Transparent Red Oxide, Raw Umber, Ivory Black, Ultramarine Blue, Turquoise Blue, Viridian, Sap Green. So that is roughly one buttload of colors, I am aware. Um, now, when I'm actually doing a painting, will I use every single color? No, but they're, they're there to push and pull in exactly the right direction. Um, and I would recommend, if you were to just be starting out with oils, start with five colors. Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Titanium White, Cad Lemon, and Cad Red. That's all you need. Or instead of Cad Red, do Alizarin Permanent. Um, just start with those. Once you master those, then you can start to add a fun color on your palette. Because each color does something slightly different. Um, also, your rose won't change ever. What do you mean, Andrew? I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> your rose won't change ever. Oh, as in it's a fake rose. I thought you meant my painting. I'm like, I'm trying to make it change. I'm trying to make it better. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's not moving. That is the disadvantage of painting roses from life. So here's my tip. Don't paint a real rose. Or paint a ton of roses from life, but then eventually just buy a fake one and apply what you know about real roses on the fake one.
All right, I'm liking that. Taking a step back. Ooh, cool. You know what? Not gonna lie, it's starting to look a little blue. Like if you didn't have that reference photo next to you, um, you you would be able to um, pick up on the cool and warm nature of this. Because people are not gonna see the rose you're working from. They're just gonna see your painting. Um, oh yeah, got that rose back there. Um, Maybe I'll grab that in a moment. Sorry, I'm totally talking to myself. All right, so there are many ways to paint this. There are many ways to paint a rose, right? I could put in a darker core shadow. I could lighten things up. Um, one thing's up. Let's see. One thing that is concerning me is this warmth here. Oh, I need to make sure I'm using liquid. This is a gift that has to be dry ASAP. Some warm there. That looks good. Okay. Um, I wish I could see more of the light side of that other leaf. So I'm working back to front. I'm gonna mix some of this green in, some of this chartreuse, and a little bit of liquid. I'm gonna lay down a nice brush stroke. like that. Okay, and I'm also going to mix some of this in here. And a little bit more here. Cool. Now the stem is red. Do I want it to be red or do I want it to be green? Why don't we take a vote? Everyone put in your, your vote. Do we have a green stem or a red stem? Okay, let me clean my brush. You guys are close. You guys are close in the comments for my exact height. At the end of the stream, I'll give away the discount code. a discount code for all of my listeners, but someone has to unlock it. All right, um, I'm going to take this turquoise and we're going to push the turquoise blue. Okay. Let's Okay, this upward facing plane is facing the light source. Boom. Very blue. Okay, I'm going to shift this part of the rose into the blue planes because they're closest. And it's mixing into the paint underneath, which is good. Just what I like. Okay. 
Taking a step back. Let's see how blue that is. Oh yeah, that is. That's getting there. Now that green mixture doesn't doesn't look that intense at all, does it? Looks warm relative to the blue. See? Every color is relative. Doesn't matter what color we chose early on. As long as it's put in the right context, it's going to be perceived as cooler or warmer. go like that greenish red green green all right so that's two greens one greenish red I'm ready to paint this so we're gonna do greenish maybe a touch of red but 90% green okay so with the stem we're going to get our raw umber chartreuse some of this some of that. We're just going to lay in a block of color. Okay. Now I can design this however I'd like. Do I want it to go up at this angle? Do I want it to go down? Okay, this is interesting. This diagonal is leading to this, this to this, this to this. So what if I had a stem? went left to right and then up. Okay, that's just placement. That's not an accurate size. There we go. I like that. Very nice. So now I'm going to place the core shadow because the, um, the stem is just cylinder. So I've got a general value for the green stem. Now I'm going to place a line dividing it in half. Okay, And now on the left side of that I'm going to create a green turquoise mixture because that's receiving reflected light. Make sure I add a bit of liquid, okay? And this is going to be a brush stroke that's entirely too large, but we're going to draw it later. Okay? Like that, and now we're going to go on the right-hand side. We're going to paint the very saturated green that it is at a very light value. And yes, it's too thick right now. That's on purpose. Okay, kind of a tangent. It's okay. Now I'm going to go in between the two using my soft brush and I'm going to Turn the form by moving that core shadow back and forth. Okay, and now we're going to draw the edge of it using our dark mixture. Now, I'm going to warm up the background a little bit. Black, alizarin, raw umber, liquid. And now I'm going to get nice and close to cylinder. Get 
really sharp edge. Okay, it's still a little too wide, in my opinion. Seeing this as a gift, are you thinking of ways to personalize it somehow, or is it already personalized because it's a rose? Um, I would say, oh, personalized for the person, for the person this is for. Um, I plan to personalize it. Yes, I'm going to personalize it. <laughs> um, but if I told you how I was doing it, I'd have to kill you. It's a secret. Unfortunately, I'm personalizing it in a way that I can't film. So, you guys are not going to be able to see the personalization of it, but at least you get to see the construction of the rose. The reason why I can't is because I need it to be dry. I'm going to be pa painting a, a transparent image on top of the rose or around the rose. Okay, so to create a more interesting background, I want it to be warmer on the left and then cooler on the right. Okay, so I'm going to introduce some transparent red oxide. And I'm going to scrub that in the top right and I'm going to create a very, very gradual transition from warm into cool. Then I could use turquoise blue on the left, like I've been using throughout, but, pardon me, uh, the disadvantage of that is that uh, turquoise blue is an opaque paint, and I want this background to sink into the background even more so. So in order to do so, I need a transparent paint. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue. Okay, so let me grab ultramarine blue. You guys can see it there. Let me add some liquid. I'm going to put some nice, thick, personalized brush strokes. The color is intentional, by the way, for personalization. In fact, I just got an idea. You can kill me when I am as good as you at painting, so I should have a long life. <laughs> uh, stop. Nah. Um, you'll find that you'll progress quickly. If you truly give a crap about this art thing, if you're working hard, you will progress rapidly. I think mindset is huge. Just work every day. Do everything you can to progress. I paint every single day. Life is short. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's working. And here's a secret. People love random thick brush strokes. They always point to that. Wow, look at that brush stroke. So I'm just going to clump up some brush strokes there. I'll do the same in the upper right-hand corner. Elizabeth and Crimson is transparent as well. So using liquid. It's a little saturated, so I might cool that off a little bit. use some Indian yellow back there too, raw umber.
Raw umber looks like gold in the right context. And I think this is the context. Sorry, I'm blocking the screen with a pole or <laughs> with my mouse stick. So drop that. Sweet. Okay. I think we need a really dark accent. Let's see, raw umber. Place that in there. I'm going to place it in right in here. We'll do one more, but this one's going to be a little bit more neutral. Okay. Honestly, I need to work harder. I'm working on the barg drawings. I drew the easiest barg foot, but I wasn't accurate. So my mentor wants me to draw it again, and I'm not allowed to measure it. Not allowed to measure until you get it right without measuring. Um, yeah, I have uh, my students do bargs too. But I have a rule that, you know, my, my mentor, my teacher taught me, which is you draw 80% of the time, you measure 20% of the time. So nothing wrong with measuring, but whenever you feel like something is off and you can't put your finger on it, then I think you should measure. And I think naturally you just you get used to not measuring quite as much. Okay, I need a nice dark note. Oops. Okay, taking a step back, viewing it at a distance. Pretty good. I wish this core shadow was more exaggerated. I'm going to go back in and put the core shadow into this stem. I think I've made it a little too wide. Okay. And this edge is not sharp enough. Okay, I like it. I think I need some broken color up in the top right hand. Hello from Hungary. Welcome back. Glad you're here. We're painting a rose from life. And uh, the picture, the thumbnail for this live stream was my painting from yesterday. Um, in fact, maybe I should take a little break and I'll show you guys the painting I did yesterday. Sorry, slow mode is on, so I had to wait to write the rest. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, I should probably turn slow mode off. No worries. Thick brush strokes reflects light beautifully, and I can have a different effect where the light source is placed. That's right, yeah. Um, I love thick brush strokes that are placed intentionally. Sorry, I gotta let the studio dog in. Come on, Miss Remy. All right, we're back. Um, so yeah, I was painting yesterday in Daniel Sprick's studio. And this is what I was working on. 
Um, that's his painting in the back. We just set up a rose. If you want to see the uh, process for this, you can go to my Instagram, Tanner Steed Art. Uh, and I just posted a progress video of it yesterday. Um, yeah. And that's what the thumbnail of this video is from. But the process that I'm using today is exactly the process that I used for that video. I mean, for that, that painting. All right. I think I have the drawing correct to train my, uh, my eye. Oh, yeah. So you have to train your eye, but um, use a mirror before you decide to use a, uh, a measuring device. Sorry, a bit sporadic. OK. Replace in this red note again. OK. So I can start to lay in some of these, the thick impostos. Um, and that's going to help describe my light or my lightest lights as much as possible. So I'm going to really load the brush with thick brush strokes. Um, and I'm only placing these pretty sparingly along the edges where the light is hitting most directly. Oh, and I still have the raw canvas right here. Grandpa would say it wasn't finished. Beautiful. Thank you, Rob. That's so nice. So the same exact color value can be perceived as brighter when you paint it thick. I'm taking a step back so I can see it at a distance. Yeah, it's, it's working pretty well. I lay on thick brush strokes, but then I tend to manipulate it a little bit more. It's coming towards me. This is the petal that's closest to the light source, so it should be very, very bright. And right now, this is kind of like a uh, cutout uh, of a rose. So I'm going to start manipulating the, the edges of the, the outskirts of the rose. Let's see. OK, take a step back. OK, there's one shape that's bothering me, and it's this guy right here. He looks a little too light. I'll use a mirror to check before measuring. Thanks, Tanner. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm always using mirrors. Using mirrors, or if I don't have one, I'll squint and turn my head. I can usually gauge proportional errors just by doing that. Um, and if you guys ever want to critique, you can email me. You can find my uh, contact information on my website, Tanner Steed Art. Um, I'd be happy to set up uh, Zoom lessons or critique sessions. I'm always, always open to that. Cool this off a little bit. This needs to be darker. Oh, crawling across the form. This is facing a warmer region. So it's going to be warmer on the right hand side. Then as we travel to the left, it's going to get cooler. But this is tilting up. 
This plane is facing the light more, so it's going to be warmer. So I'm just crawling across the form. I think we could go a heck of a lot darker back in here, but also not that warm. So I want to get a mixture of the two. I'm going to take a step back to gauge that. Um, not going to lie, I liked it better before. So we're going to warm it back up a little bit. Raw umber. All about subtlety. My favorite painters were masters at subtlety. Really like Andrew Wyeth. Sensing some purples in here. And of course, when you work from a photograph, you guys are not going to be able to perceive uh, the subtle color and temperature variations that I can see from life. So I'd highly recommend working from life when painting from a rose, not from this photo. I mean, you can actually paint from this photo. That's fine if you wanted to paint along. But just know that photo limits you. We get much more out of painting from life. Embarrassingly, I can't afford lessons or critiques. Well, reach out. We'll see what we can do. If you, if you really wanted to, I'd hate for that to be the case. I, I totally get it. Got to save money, buy art supplies, get as much free stuff online as possible. I mean, this is a free lesson right here. You know? Uh, what you guys can do for me is, uh, in exchange for this free lesson, could you just like and subscribe? <laughs> Share it with your friends. Um, no, I really appreciate you guys returning. Remember, I do this every week. Subject changes based on whatever I'm working on or whatever I need to practice. Um, last week I did a painting of a, a tree, which turned out quite well. I actually ended up deciding that I wanted to do a larger painting of it. So. <laughs> Um, I started doing this large painting and I was really excited. I got the charcoal sketched out and I checked my email and my email says, uh, it's the email for the governor show in Colorado. And um, I had been preparing four large paintings for that show. Well, read your email carefully, Tanner. They wanted too large and too small.
So I'm like, oh boy, here we go. So I'm working on two small paintings as fast as I can. And honestly, thank goodness I did that tree sketch because now I'm working on another one with a, a different, uh, different feeling to it. And I like it so much better. It's going so well. I'm so excited. So I'll be sure to share that with you soon. It's different than the one I did last week. Same subject, but the lighting is completely different. Of course, Rob, just message me. Maybe we can link up on Zoom and we'll find something that works for both of us. Are you getting quiet, getting focused? The shapes are getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> okay, we're gonna warm up this area a little bit more. Let's see how warm we can get before it's garish. Introducing some orange in here, that Indian yellow. Gosh, I love that color. I'm just realizing now, I'm not sure if I've used the yellow ochre at all. I'm not going to force it in if it doesn't seem necessary. Okay, I'm going to take a step back. I'm looking in the mirror, which is in the back of my studio, and it looks like a rose. I'll keep going. I like that warmth. I love that tree painting from last week. Thank you so much. In fact, you guys want to see, this is the new and improved work in progress uh, tree painting. Can't get the whole thing in the screen, but we've got this dark foreground. We've got the light, nice diagonal in the sky. Hold it in the small camera for a thumbnail. Let's see. Pretty excited. <clears throat> Just have paintings all over the studio. That's how it goes. Where's my rose? It's funny, I have so many cameras going on. I've got a screen here, a camera there, a camera there. A subject over here, looking all around. Um, yep, still lost, there we go. Wherever you can lose an edge, lose it. So I haven't shown that to anybody. Shh. Thanks, Rob. Just looking for very, very subtle shifts of value. That turquoise up here is a little intense. Gonna harmonize it a little bit. Peel some of it off. Lay it in the back. Soften that edge. 
Okay, I'm noticing I need slight value change right here. Super subtle. Okay. Then I need a dark accent. It's nice and warm. Right here. Load that brush again. Put it right here. Yep. Taking a step back, view at the distance. Okay, this edge needs to be significantly softer. As does this. This value needs to be darker. You can see I kind of end up using the palette, I mean the painting as a palette. I'm very, very, very aware of what color and temperature is on my brush. As soon as I stop paying attention, you run the risk of muddying a color up. Muddying a color, from my point of view, is when you put the wrong temperature in the wrong area. Like if I took the blue and put it into the light. When the colors are not harmonized. So the, these were created from the same mixtures. Whereas if I introduced alizarin crimson in here, too much of it, it might, the world may explode. Okay, kind of noticing on the camera, or on the, the reference, we've got this kind of light streak. It's kind of interesting on the leaf. Um, it's not like that from in reality, but I kind of like it. So I'm going to put that in there. And there's this nice cast shadow, or like core shadow. Ooh, I see. And it's cooler up here. There are just about a million ways to paint this thing. That's why paintings take so long to finish. Because you want to make sure you do it the best, best way. Okay. Um, if you're in Denver, um, I teach a floral painting class or course at the Art Students League. Um, so if you'd like to Sign up for that. Go on to their website. Don't know how far in the future you're watching this, but uh, I bet I'm still teaching that course. It's one of my favorites.
Okay, I'm seeing some warmth. Back here. So seeing some warmth back behind this petal. Blue rose is actually the rarest rose color. Uh -huh. Well, perfect. I mean, technically, white rose with blue light, is it rare? Or I wonder if I ask someone, what color is this rose? They said, oh, it's a blue rose, obviously. Um, you mean they naturally grow? They're naturally blue? That's so interesting. Is that what you're saying? Okay, I'm going to start softening some of these edges. So whenever the edge of the petal is more like a cylinder, if it's curving like a nice uh, soft pillow, it's going to be a softer edge. So I'm both observing what I'm seeing and based on my understanding of form and how it relates to cylinders, cones, and cubes, I'll use that understanding in supporting my decision for what edge quality we're going to have. Okay, so this is turning very softly. And it'd be nice to find places where I could lose an edge entirely into the background. Thank you, you love watching. Excellent. Glad, glad you uh, spent your time with us. Hope you learned something. Okay, I'm gonna soften that edge. Seeing an opportunity to put in another cool turquoise note. Close here. Take a step back. Work 
second. I think we need to get much darker up here. Darker and cooler. Mm, that's too warm. I get more turquoise blue. Maybe some ultramarine blue. Missing in a core shadow. Make it look so easy. Well, eventually, you kind of uh, figure out the way that oil paint behaves. And then you can kind of do anything you want. You can test and retest things. And I think psychologically or cognitively, you get less exhausted. You can survive longer before you reach that exhaustion point. OK. Not sure about that core shadow. I think it's a little too intense. So we're just going to jostle that back and forth. Less is more. Soften all of this. And now the petals that are further away in the distance, I want them to feel even further away. So I'm going to soften pretty much everything that passes behind another petal. I want the light to stand tall, and I want the shadows to recede. So all of the shadows, I'm kind of losing the edge. And by softening this, I'm actually kind of loading the brush a little bit. And so I can use this throughout the painting if I need to. I want a dark note up here. I can load the brush with that. Okay, I'll warm that up a little bit more. I'm going to take a step back again. Subtlety, subtlety, subtlety. whole plane can harmonize a little bit more. Uh, 
And I want to soften its edge because it's really tucking under. I can almost exaggerate that a little bit. Really, a rose from afar, when you're viewing a rose from afar, if this was a very, very small rose in a still life, you don't need all of the subtle detail, every outline describing each and every petal. It's completely unnecessary. I think it's much more tasteful when you lose as many edges as possible. You have less information. I suppose that's the um, attraction to a more brushworky picture. You get up close and you're like, holy moly, how did, how are those brush strokes making that, that picture feel so real? Right? It's the, the big shapes, the overall value structure. So I want my brush strokes to kind of act as cross contours, okay? As in, I want the brush stroke to describe the form itself. I want it to feel like the stroke are kind of like veins growing out from the picture or along the, the form. A big brush stroke, let's see, right along this edge. Okay. Okay. So Almost done with this little gift study. Take this really, really far if we wanted, but I don't know. I kind of like it simple as it is. It's accomplishing what I would like. There's just one region that's concerning me, and it's right here. Thanks for your time, Tanner. I gotta run an errand, but I'll check back later to see the finished gift. I'm sure the recipient will be pleased. Thanks again liked and already subscribed. Fantastic. Yeah, again, thank you so much for hanging out and coming in uh, every week. It's so cool to see returning viewers, getting to know you guys a little bit better. So yeah, have a good time on your errand and check in at the end. Um, I'm going to make this light a bit more exaggerated passing through this part of the petal. Take a step back, see if that's effective. Yeah, that's pretty good. Looks so 3D, thank you. <laughs> um, the reason why it looks 3D is because I'm viewing it as a 3D object, like a sphere, or a cone, or a cube. It's that simple. Master those and you can paint anything.
Okay, let's see if we can get away with another dark accent. Oh, well, we have this one, but I kind of lost that edge. It's kind of bothersome. Let's try to get it back. See the benefit of pre-mixing all your colors like this? I'm not really worried about remixing over and over again and concerning myself with, oh, geez, what was in that mixture? Nope. Makes it so much easier on you. There we go. warm up some of these notes on the left hand side. When I'm checking my work, I tend to flip my head upside down. <laughs> do you guys do that too? All right. There's that. I'm going to grab a larger fan brush, kind of lose some detail, lose some edges. We said we wanted to emphasize that diagonal, so I'm going to soften in a clear direction, left and right, left and right, left and right. left and right, and then I'm going to retain some of the uh, petals that are going in that same direction, make them slightly harder. I want the stem to feel like it recedes, so I'm losing the edges on that stem as it drops lower and lower as it descends.
want thick lights, thin shadows. Going away from reality a little bit, taking a step back, viewing it from afar, that looks pretty good. A little mysterious, that's what I like. I like mystery in my roses. <laughs> and by knocking some of these, the lights into the background, it kind of gives that glowing effect, which is pretty cool. Feels more luminous that way. Like the light is so intense, it's bleeding into the background. Like a flare. Oops. Sorry. Bumped our camera. There we go. Sure, we are focused. Bloop, there we go. All right, I'm thinking we are just about done. So if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. Really appreciate you being here. And if you'd like to see any videos, if you have any video ideas that you'd like to share, please feel free to comment down below or message me on social media. Um, my Instagram is Tanner Steed Art. Pretty active on there. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sharpen some of these edges. Going up at that diagonal. Awesome live, love the rose painting. Thank you for streaming. Take care, all. Happy arting. Fantastic. Thanks, man. I uh, hope you tune in next week. Love having you around. All right, so thank you guys. Um, nobody guessed my height. I am exactly five foot, <coughs> eight inches. <laughs> um, but if you guys want discounts on prints, if you made it all the way to the end, or if you want discounts on the website, DM me on Instagram and I will send you a private message, private code with a discount code um, on uh, on some items on my website. My website is Tanner Steed Art. Um, yep, make sure you 